done it. I've made my decision and I've acted upon it. And thanks to Elizabeth's understanding, it hasn't been too painful or difficult. And I'm sure it's best for everyone concerned. After all, one doesn't scrap 20 splendid and rewarding years with a wonderful wife like Elizabeth for just a whim. No, let us be grateful for the past, but let it not be a shadow upon the future. And your future, John Cameron, is Lenore. Yes? Yes, this is John. Oh, hello, Charles. How did you know I was at the club? She did. Well, after all, I'm not in hiding, just uh, <laughs> observing a propriety under the circumstances. But Charles, we are all rational, intelligent people. Elizabeth knows that my love for Lenore is, well, the real thing. There's been no deceit, no hypocrisy, no evasion, no... But arrangements have already been made, Charles, and Hamilton assures me that the divorce will be handled with dispatch and discretion. Uh, by the way, uh, Lenore and I expect to have our wedding in, um, in Portofino. Ha <laughs> ha, lovely place, Portofino. You should try it sometime, Charles. The friendly hills, the colored sails in the little harbor, the blue Mediterranean beyond, the warm... What was that? Oh, of course, old man. Sorry I kept you. <laughs> and thanks for calling. Goodbye. Portofino, <laughs> that's my surprise. You see, darling, I thought we could be married there. No, 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 I had no rigid plans, darling. It's just a suggestion. Monte Carlo. Hmm, good. As long as it's as soon as possible. What do you think of July? August? September? Well, whichever you like, darling, but it'll always be January with you. <laughs> At the beginning of the year. A brand new calendar of inexhaustible and mysterious promises. Embossed in gold leaf with the magic title of Vita Nuova. <laughs> uh, that's Italian, darling. A new life. Thank you, my sweet. Oh, yes, I am comfortable enough here. As a matter of fact, in these bleak, monastic surroundings, my fancy is set free and I've nothing but the future to behold, and the prospect gives me the strength to be patient. Do I? Ah, uh, doubt that the stars are fire, doubt that the sun doth move, doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. <laughs> now, here, over the phone. Well then, my sweet, here is the seal to this indenture of my love. Now, uh, how about dinner at the colony tonight? Oh. Tomorrow? Splendid. Yes, but no goodbye, darling. I shall never say goodbye to my Lenore. Yes. Yes. Goodbye. New life. Well.
Perhaps I'd better stay in. Of course, why didn't I think of it before? Uh, will you give me Thornton 56262, please? Thank you. Hello? Is Mr. Hamilton in? This is John Cameron. Thank you. Oh, hello, George. Yes, I'm at the club. Well, no, I'm sure I'm doing the right thing, George. In fact, I should say that a few hours in these, uh, <laughs> these, these, these neutral quarters have served to make assurance doubly sure. If there'd ever been the slightest doubt about my decision, and there never was. What do you say, George? Oh, the reason I called, yes. Well, I've been thinking. Uh, you know, Elizabeth has always been fond of the place at Newport. Well, I'd like you to arrange for that, too, in the property settlement. Well, no, of course, she didn't request it. She's left everything in my hands. And so, make a note about Newport. I know she'll be pleased. Goodbye. She'll be pleased. I should have thought of it before, of course. Perhaps I should let her know. Uh, uh, please get me my home. Uh, will you? Woodstock 7321. Thank you. Is that you, Bentley? This is Mr. Cameron. I'd like to speak to my... That is Mrs. Cameron. Ask her to come to the phone, will you? In the garden? Well, find her, please. It's very important. John, sorry if I interrupted something. Cocktails in the garden. The Andersons, that's nice. How are they? Mm-hmm. Well, tell Tom to call me. Uh, no, perhaps I'd better call him. Well, how are you feeling, Elizabeth? Splendid. Yes, I seem to be weathering the transitional period with, uh, <laughs> with equanimity. Largely because of your generous attitude, my dear. Oh, you know what I mean, Bess, and I'm grateful. No, that wasn't my reason for calling, but uh, I've just been thinking. Uh, we've... Uh, you've always been so happy at Newport, so I... Uh, well, I, I, I thought you should have the house. I mean, it seems only proper. You don't. But, but, but you always said you loved Newport. Too expensive to keep up? Well, yes, it's fairly large, but... Badly in need of repair. Oh, oh my dear, just a, a spot of paint here and there, and after all, you could always rent it. Oh, well, then you, you, you might sell it to, um, uh, to... Uh, what do you mean, even my grandfather couldn't unload it? But you must be reasonable, Elizabeth. I've already instructed Hamilton to make the arrangements, and I would look ridiculous now if I... if, if I, I, I... I want you to have Newport. But it's the least you can... Oh. Oh. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, my dear, there's nothing more I can say. Except that if you ever do change your mind, be assured, Elizabeth, Newport is yours for the asking. Yes, dear. No, dear. Goodbye, dear. She wasn't pleased. But why did she turn it down? I never expected Elizabeth, of all people, to be vindictive. But there's no other explanation. That must be it. Vindictive. Vindictive. And after it's all been settled in such a painless and tidy manner. Did I lie? Did I ever pretend? Didn't I tell her of my love for Lenore? 
and explain that it was no question of disloyalty, of frivolity. I didn't seek it, did I? It just happened. In all decency, there was only one thing to do. Accept it. Admit it. And act with equity and consideration for everybody concerned. After all, my conscience is clear. There's no reason to begin to doubt. And what is more, Beth knew all this. In fact, she accepted, generously, sympathetically. There can be no question of... of, of... This is John Cameron, do you hear me? I want you to send up the boy, that is, Edward, right away. No, 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 I don't want him to bring anything, I just want Edward. Thank you. You called, sir? I did. Edward, you are sober, honest, and perceptive. And you have good vision, haven't you? Well, yes, sir. In a manner of speaking, I do need glasses to read. As for my honesty, ah, I... That goes without saying. You've known me for a long time. Yes, sir. You'd recognize me, wouldn't you? Of course, sir. You're Mr. Campbell. Of course. Then come with me. Now, look closely and tell me. Do you see him? Who, sir? No, no, don't look at me. Look in the mirror. And tell me, do you see me there? Yes, sir. It's you, sir. Yes, sir. Is that all, sir? What? Oh, yes, yes, I'm afraid that's all, Edward. Yes? Lenore! Good morning, darling. Thank heavens you called. 
Oh, oh nothing, nothing. I, I, I just lost something. I've been looking for it all the morning. Uh, no, I haven't found it yet. I, I wouldn't call it important, but, uh, but what about you, my sweet? What are you doing? What are you wearing? What were you thinking about before you called me? What did you dream last night? Tell me. Yes. Nice. You did really? No, no, no. Go on, go on. Please don't stop. I want to hear everything. <laughs> Love you. Doubt that the stars are fired. Doubt that the sun doth move. D oh, yes, I told you that already, didn't I? <laughs> Well, since every love is always new, my darling, its declaration can never be... What did I lose? Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, well, to describe it, I'd have to find it. Yes, I suppose I do sound mysterious, but of course there's an explanation. There, there must be. Uh, darling, what kind of a man do I appear to be to you? No, I was never more serious. What kind of a man am I? <laughs> Handsome. <laughs> Distinguished, wonderful. Darling, darling, it's sweet of you. Enormously exaggerated, of course, but very nice to hear from someone you love. But, Lenore, it isn't very much alive. I mean, it's not much of a picture of a man, is it? But never mind, darling. What about lunch? Oh, you have? Well, then run along to your beauty parlor, darling, and call me when you're through. But if they make you any lovelier than you are, I don't think I could bear it. <laughs> Goodbye. Who am I? Am I a humbug who can't see himself the way he really is? What am I? No longer any proof that I even exist. Where am I? How did I lose myself? Who had me last? Yes, I belong to a reputable club. Who was it said a crowd of fools gathered together to be counted wise? Credit cards. Automobile club. In case of emergency, please notify. Does losing oneself constitute an emergency? Phone number. Mimi Loring. I wonder what happened to her. She had the most amazing... Now, that proves my memory's all right. Mm. I hereby certify that the person described here on is... What person? Uh, will you get me my home, Woodstock 7321? Thank you. Uh, busy? Oh. No, just cancel the call. Thank you. Yes? Elizabeth? Why, I was just trying to reach you. We must have crossed wires. Oh. Nothing. That is, I was wondering whether you had reconsidered the, uh, uh, the Newport matter. Perhaps I didn't make myself clear yesterday. Uh, what? You will? Why, of course it pleases me. But that wasn't the reason I wanted you to have it. Th that is, I, uh, well, I don't want to sound stuffy, but it, it really was my genuine interest in your happiness and uh, and welfare. It, oh, there's no use my pretending best. I... <laughs> I suppose I was trying to make myself feel better. Not that you don't deserve Newport and more. But I guess I was more concerned with my magnanimity than with my obligations. 
I should have expected you wouldn't let me get away with it. After all, you you know me almost better than better than I know myself. And Bess, why did you call me? You thought you saw me wandering around the garden. <laughs> I haven't left this room. I I, I couldn't have. I. Oh, now I see. Good heavens, why didn't I think of that? I must have been trying to find my way back. My better judgment trying to show me where... <laughs> uh, no, you, you see, darling, I, I had a silly nightmare last night. It's utter nonsense, of course, but it seems I... I walked out on myself. Yes, I know it must sound ridiculous, but... Everything is suddenly clear to me now. No, 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 I'm all right, Bess, and there's a, there's a great deal more to it than what I've told you. But, but one thing I do know, no one else could recognize me for the idiot I've been and still tolerate me. A a and Bess, Bess, that man in the garden, if he's still there, and I don't know where else he could be, will you tell him to come back to me? I need him. May I come home, Bess? Uh, will you send up Edward right away, please? I'll be checking up. Thank you. to yourself I'm going home because of you. After your offensive behavior, carrying on like a like a Cheshire cat, appearing and disappearing, carping and criticizing, flouncing off in a tantrum. And if you are under the delusion that I shall now abide by all your rulings, let me assure you I shall do no such thing. Ha <laughs> ha! Do without you nicely. The only thing I can't do without is Elizabeth. Come in, Edward. Come in, Edward, come in. Uh, Edward. Yes, sir? You see, there he is. Yes, sir. He went away, but he came back. He came back home. I thought that's where you were going, sir. Well, come on, for Pete's sake. What are we waiting for? Let's go. 